Blessed be the kingdom of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to St. Peter. I'm Jared, the pastor here. Where our mission is to build the church by developing fully devoted followers of Jesus. And let's see. Today in our sermon, we'll begin our next uh, preaching series, Extraordinary Life, how the ordinariness of everyday life is exactly the place where to uh, find and marvel and have amazement at God's work. Today we'll consider how God pulls all of us human beings across time and space into one unity, into unity for his purposes. Of course, as I tell you each week, worship here is something we all do together, and so you're invited to join the congregation's parts. Those, of course, are in these uh, programs or bulletins you received on your way in. Songs are in the Cranberry books. And then, of course, anything you need will be up on that screen as well for your convenience. And as I do each week... <clears throat> We'll point all the folks who are listening on the radio or who are watching later on YouTube over to our website, which is stpeterhallettsville.org. Go to that online drop menu and you can get today's order of service for your participation while you listen or watch. And as we do each time, before we begin, let me draw your attention to these yellow slips. These are our connection cards, and if you're a regular attender or a member here, we ask that you please fill out your name in either your phone number or your email address. Later on in the service, all of us can place these here in the, offering, in the uh, tall offering boxes. And don't forget about the prayer request cards. That's these blue uh, little slips there on the back of the, of the bench in front of you. If you've got a specific prayer request, you can write that down here in the space provided and place those here in the offering box as well. In following worship, everyone's invited to enjoy some coffee and snacks, which will be in the fellowship hall, which is that way across the building. All right, now today we celebrate the 13th Sunday after Pentecost in that middle section, that very long part of the year we call Ordinary Time. And let's see, in our gospel lesson today, we're going to hear an example of, uh, a great example from our, from our namesake, St. Peter, as he makes his rock-solid confession of faith that Jesus is indeed the Son of God. Amen, right? All right, now, as we hear God's Word proclaimed, we join with our song and prayers. On the back of those connection cards are a few simple next steps, not announcements, but next steps you can take to offer your life to God today. As I mentioned, we've got coffee and snacks during our coffee time over here in the Fellowship Hall. That's followed by our learning time. We're back on our regular uh, school year schedule. So that means the uh, children have Sunday school, the adults have Bible study. And then would you click to the next slide? And coming up real soon, you can take control of your money with Financial Peace University. It's nine lesson class offers biblical wisdom and common sense to help you tackle budgeting, pay off debt, and make your money work for you. Now you can sign up for the uh, class, start a free 14-day trial. There you've got a flyer in your bulletin. Oh, we don't have a flyer in our bulletin. It's a busy week this week. Uh, so... Well, it's in your announcement somewhere, too, in the back of the bulletin. But you can go ahead and get signed up. Now you say, Pastor, if I go to that, people will think I have money problems. I'm an old person at church. I don't want people to think I have money problems. If you take a look at the economy around us, the people who don't go to Dave Ramsey are the people who have money problems. So if you want people to think you don't have money problems, go to Dave Ramsey, all right? And if you can't go, you know someone who can, so spread the word. And would you click one more slide? And as we do in the fall, we have our great outdoor Sunday coming up, our camo Sunday. We do things a little differently on those days. Uh, of course, we'll be sending the email out uh, with some details about it. But it's an opportunity for you to reach out, especially to the men of our community, and invite one to come with you. As you know, we make sure service is just an hour that day, right? Sermon's only 10 minutes. Of course, we make it look a little more manly in here, according to our theme, right? Our great outdoors theme, not only hunting, right? All the great outdoors, kayaking, bicycling, hunting, hiking, whatever you got. You can bring it with you that day. We'll decorate in here. Wear camo that day, all that kind of fun stuff. Now, why do we bother with this? We do it to make it a little easier for you to invite someone to come with you, Right? That's why we do stuff like this. Invite someone to come with you that day. Let them see that church isn't, as, uh, isn't well, in whatever they're afraid it is. Invite them to come with you. We have a little fun in here that day. So details come in your, bulletin, in your email, but you know that's coming up. Bring someone there with you. It's got a special blessing for our uh, hunters and fishers that day as well. All right. Don't forget to check all the announcements. Those are found in the back of your bulletins. 
So to stand and take our first step together with our first song. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 We say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are born captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the, to the glory, glory of your, of your holy, holy name. name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you who believe and repent of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. 
and also with you. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. O oh God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son, that we may gladly minister to all the world through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Our next step's memory verse for this week is from the 16th chapter of Matthew, verses 16. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Our first reading is from the 51st chapter of Isaiah, verses 1 through 6. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you, for he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him marry many. For the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places and will make her wilderness like Eden, the desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people and give heed to me, my nation. For a teaching will go out from me, and the, my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation is gone out, and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me, and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth beneath, for the heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will live forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We will now read responsively Psalm 138. I will give thanks to the Lord, to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I will sing your praise. I will, I will bow down, down toward your, your holy temple, temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways, the ways of the Lord, that, that great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He perceives the haughty from far. Though, Though I, I walk, walk in the midst, midst of trouble, trouble you, you keep, keep me safe. safe. You, you stretch forth, forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. enemies. Your, your right hand will save, save me. The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. The second reading is from the 12th chapter of Romans, verses 1 through 8. 
I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as, as in one body we have many members, and not all of the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy and proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. Alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the word of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but well, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. The church's one foundation is Jesus Christ her Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he of her war. She, she waits, waits 
Christ the consummation of peace forevermore, till with the vision glorious her longing eyes are blessed, and the great church victorious shall be the church at rest. Yet she on earth has union with God the three in one, and mystic sweet communion with those whose rest is one. O blessed heavenly chorus, Lord save us by your grace, that we like saints before us may see you face to face. Philosophers have long wondered at, hey, wake up. Some of you drifted off when you heard the word philosophers, all right? <laughs> I'm not going to bore you with some dry lesson about Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle, right? I might bore you, but not with that, okay? Now, everyone's wondered about this very idea, right? You've seen your kids do it. You did it as kids. The philosophers, they just took it seriously long after the rest of us had moved on to more immediate questions. It's real simple. How are the many one? Well, this is what I mean, right? My wife and I and many of you, right, we all drive pickup trucks. How do we know that they're all pickup trucks? Even a little Hot Wheels toy is a pickup truck, but not an El Camino or a Subaru, all right? How do we know that nightshade and tomatoes are the same kind of plant, even though one will make you sick and the other is healthy for you? Right, if humankind, all of humankind is descended from just Adam and Eve, how are there so many different kinds of people, both regarding biology and personality? And on that last one, at least, without the Judeo-Christian tradition, humans have not always accepted that we are all the same kind of creature. You know, you and I know they say that variety is the spice of life. But no one actually lives that way, right? I mean, making full use of all the variety available to them. So why bother having so many versions of the same thing, right? Even common chickens, right? Good old Gallus domesticus. There's hundreds of breeds, right? It's the same animal, genetically exactly the same animal in hundreds of colors and sizes. Even one for us in the house we'll call a Brahma. And of course, since World War II, it's become increasingly common to talk about the importance of our diversity, our authentic selves as a therapeutic way to get along in an increasingly complex, dissociative world. But now, all that means anymore is just to be confirmed to a very narrow set of leftist idolatries that seek indeed to destroy the very Judeo-Christian tradition that makes them possible. I mean, eventually, BlackRock, Vanguard, and the World Economic Forum will force you to submit. Resistance is futile to this rainbow board. Surely, surely something better exists to unify us humans without commodifying us. Well, it's right here in these very ordinary things and questions of everyday life that we find God at work. I've been watching on YouTube the Daily Wire series about Exodus, right, the book of Exodus in the Bible. And famously, the Exodus story contains those ten plagues against Egypt, right? You guys remember that from Sunday school, right? And a certain kind of person just assumes that, right, the frogs, that was one of the plagues, so the frogs, let's say, were some kind of supernatural frog. They were magic frogs, if you will. But that's not true at all, right? They were ordinary frogs, right? The frogs that lived in Egypt, and God took and used them for an extraordinary supernatural purpose, right? The deliverance of Israel. 
St. Paul today takes some very, something so very, very ordinary. The diversity of human culture and civilization. So neatly summed up in the Bible as Jews and Gentiles, right? Jews and everyone else. And St. Paul explains how God, using something as ordinary as the law to expose and to convict good old-fashioned sin, which is all too common. And then it's something ordinary as a man, but not just any man, of course, Jesus, God's son. And something as ordinary as speech and words. All of those things are used by God to unite humanity into a redeemed and renewed whole which St. Paul gives the very ordinary name of body. Extraordinariness, then, isn't found in our attempts to self-differentiate from one another, to become internet famous, as all the children want to do these days, but it's found only in God's grace that transforms us from the conformist world of sin and failure, sickness and death, and the devil and evil. Now, St. Paul's not making a a mere metaphor or analogy when he's calling Christians the body of Christ. It's not simply a symbol to be decoded. He's speaking to a reality that exists beyond our five natural bodily senses. Well, Pastor, I don't believe in that kind of hoo-ha figuring and ciphering, blah, blah, blah. Well, let me ask it to you this way. Do you love your mother, your kids, your spouse, your dog, even a cold beer or a hot cup of coffee? Of course you do. And how do you know that you love them? Well, see, now you've entered into that place beyond the physical world, that place of metaphysics. Now, St. Paul speaks this reality that surrounds physical reality, kind of like water surrounds a fish or the atmosphere surrounds us and the globe. Beloved, believing, baptized Christians form a single thing that he calls a body with Jesus as the head of this thing. Now, we probably have an easier time wrapping our minds around this locally, right? Say within a congregation. But the more we zoom out, right? The more abstract it tends to feel. How is it that those people in the Bible days and the people who will come after us are still one body separated by thousands of years and tens of thousands of miles. Indeed, when you look at the history of Western civilization, it becomes pretty clear pretty darn quickly that somewhere around the 800s, warfare was almost always warfare against fellow Christians in the body of Christ. Now, none of this disproves St. Paul's assertion. It really just shows how sinful we actually are. But we're getting closer, however. If we remember what St. Paul wrote just a little earlier in Romans, we already heard this uh, back a couple weeks ago, right? St. Paul tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All have been imprisoned under disobedience so that God will be merciful to all. <laughs> And that God will join all who have been baptized into the death and resurrection of Jesus. So now two things become clear. First, that Christ is the more important part of that phrase, body of Christ, right? And second, that some kind of organizing principle must exist if one Jesus can save many people. You get a few of these in the Bible, right? John 15, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Saints Peter and Paul also write about stones built into a living temple. Then, of course, here in Romans 12 and again in 1 Corinthians 12 and later in Ephesians 5, we get this notion of the body of Christ. And Paul seems to especially like the body of Christ image because it connects all the way back to Genesis. How man and woman are two that become one. And probably as well because it fits so nicely with those words from Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is one. That is, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are one, just as Jesus insists in John's Gospel. Now, 
you and I both know that as humans, we always want to segregate ourselves into us and them. Or we, they situations, as my friend Pastor Al Daly always called them. Now, Dr. Seuss, right, he was a Lutheran. I'm sure you didn't know that. Dr. Seuss mocked this human foible in his children's books, especially the butter battle and the sneeches, right? Those are the yellow guys with the star bellies and plain bellies. See, any difference that we humans can perceive is good enough for us sinful humans to first become suspicious and then later blame each other. And we especially do it in our congregations, which is one of the orneriest things to do. So instead of this entropic drive to segregate, God seeks to aggregate, to pull things together. And he does it through the life and the death and resurrection of Jesus, which forgives all of our sins, rescues us from death, and redeems us from the devil. And rather than being dumped into a big organizational mess, or a big mess with no organizational reason, right? God makes order out of chaos, just like in Genesis. And so he turns all of us, diverse people, into a single body, the body of Jesus Christ on earth for the sake of the world. Now, the human body is estimated to contain something like 30, 30 trillion cells. Right, that's 27 times more than all the people who ever lived. All right? So even though St. Paul didn't know or understand or learn cellular biology, the point is that his trope of the body in its 2,000 parts, as a soap commercial called it, has more than enough room for all the Christians. And yet we still can't escape that philosophical question here. How do we know that despite all appearances, Christians are unified as a single body of Christ. St. Paul tells us, Do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. To be conformed is to be limited, to be shaped accordingly, pressed in, chopped down. To be transformed is to be made into something new. To have our minds renewed is not to make up our minds to think the right thoughts or to recite the correct facts. Right? Even the devil and his minions can do that. No, to be transformed by the renewing of our minds comes only through the work of the Holy Spirit so that we can know, perceive, understand, and experience this greater reality of unity in Jesus Christ. Now, lots of our betters out in the world would lecture us, in the words of Justin Trudeau, Right? If you don't know who he is, he's the Joe Biden of Canada. Right? That's a real prize, isn't it? Anyway, he likes to, everywhere he goes, he likes to say, our diversity is our strength. I'm pretty sure that's how he greets his family in the morning instead of saying good morning. And whatever leftist fault or all he means by that, it has nothing to do with the Bible. See, for those types, people like Trudeau, it's a call to domination and to subordination. Christianity, on the other hand, has at its very core a unity, despite all our differences. Some of which matter, some of which don't. Hence that ancient church slogan, in essentials unity and non-essentials liberty. The essential unity is the gospel of Jesus Christ. He died for the forgiveness of our sins. And from that, from that, all of Christianity comes to call us a body, as St. Paul does, is to have him as our head. It also speaks to the renewing and regenerating power of the gospel. We humans who were once divided by, well, pretty much anything we could think of, are now united in, with, and through the one Jesus. So what do we do with our differences? Just ignore them? Well, that's silly and impossible. God has a purpose for each thing. See, instead of a Tower of Babel-type confusion, the Holy Spirit, who grants us grace, reorders us as parts of a single body. The whole body requires all of its parts, and so the same for us as Christians. I mean, what's the alternative if this is wrong? It's a world full of two-year-olds crying and doing their own thing, incapable of a mutual life together. Again, much as we begin to see with that rainbow world around us. 
See, all the parts of the body must be reconciled to one another, the whole body, in order to function. That is to say, placing your elbow where your ear goes doesn't work. And what's more, grace is not a zero-sum, us-versus-them, we-they situation. God allots the proper measure of each gift to accomplish his purposes on his timeline. And indeed, it's such a complex allocation and distribution problem. The Holy Spirit must renew our minds. Not so that we can try to run the show without him, but so that we can accomplish what he sets before us. The things which are good, acceptable, and perfect, as St. Paul calls them. So he lists just a few of these godly tasks. Prophecy, or we really would say preaching these days. Serving, teaching, encouraging, giving, that's giving beyond a tithe, right? Leading, compassion, just to name a few. And if we're truly one, then all the gifts of the body are available to the whole body. Each of us can call upon every single gift from time to time, even if we're stronger in some and weaker in others. Many of you know I've been coaching my daughter's soccer team. And our goals as a team include, well, being one, right? Playing together, supporting each other's weaknesses, and using each other's strengths. And I've even finally got one kid who can play left wing or forward, right? That's great. And they're getting closer. They're getting closer as a team, right? Getting closer to being able to pass on the run, do all that stuff. We're having a good time out there. But all the things we do in good old ordinary practice for the sake of building up the whole team. St. Paul makes the same point to us. The Holy Spirit transforms us from the limitations of our conformist world. And the Holy Spirit fills us with grace and faith and gives specific functions so that we can build the whole body up together. Every system of the body directed by Jesus the head to grow the body up into its full stature. And all of it for the sake of the world, which includes you and me, and it includes we and they, just as God desires it. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of, of the Holy Spirit, Spirit, he became incarnate from, from the Virgin Mary, Mary and, and was, was made man. For our sake, he was crucified, crucified under Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He, he suffered death and was buried. buried. On, On the third day, day he, he rose again, again in accordance, in accordance with, with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will, he will come, come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. dead. And his, and his kingdom, kingdom will have, have no end. end. We <coughs> believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all people according to their need. Heavenly Father, thank you for your, our namesake, St. Peter. He was so, so very human, and yet you gave him faith to confess Jesus as your Son and Messiah. And you used him, please use us too, to do your work of forgiving, confessing and proclaiming Jesus as Lord to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Establish the church upon the solid rock of Christ and on the faithful witness of your apostles. 
Make the church truly the one body of Christ upon this earth. Do not let the gates of hell prevail against its faithful pro proclamation and teaching. By your Holy Spirit, make it wise, gracious, and steadfast in rightly forgiving and retaining sin. Use it to bring many to faith in Jesus, their Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Keep safe your servants who are persecuted for naming Jesus as Christ and God. Visit them with your righteousness and draw near with your salvation. Let our words and deeds never tarnish their witness. We also pray for missionaries, seminarians, and theologians entrusted with proclaiming your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Transform this congregation to your good, acceptable, and perfect will. Help us to not think too highly of ourselves, but with sober judgment to use our talents according to the grace you have given each of us. We pray for our mission to develop fully devoted followers of Jesus, to support Solid Rock, our mission in action, and that you send us adults for baptism. Build up the body of your beloved son among us through sound preaching and teaching, generous giving, cheerful service, and loving kindness. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Bless all those who have entrusted and shaped our faith. Parents, grandparents, pastors, Sunday school teachers, and everyone whose love for Jesus shines brightly in word and deed. Thank you for the saints who can, whose confession of Jesus as Lord has been a blessing to others and has formed the unseen foundation of our own faith. Use us to encourage, instruct, and guide others in lives of discipleship and service to your glory and for the building up of your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Teach the world's rulers, listen to you, the giver of justice and the author of salvation. Transform their decisions and deeds to your righteous will so that they care for the lowly and give hope to all who cry out to you. Heal the divisions that fracture families, communities, and nations, and help us to live at peace with our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Bless all who risk their lives to protect, defend, and rescue others. Give them valor, loyalty, wisdom, and competence. Help them to act according to your will and for the benefit of your people. Heal their wounds, reunite them swiftly with loved ones, and crown their labors with the blessing of your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O God, giver and sustainer of life in this time of need, send us the gift of rain so that we may receive the fruits of the earth for our benefit and for your praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Graciously answer the prayers of all who call upon you for help including Mark, Cody Price Jr., Betty Williams, Cam Hoffman, Briggs Brown, Ronnie Hinky, Irene Minkalinka, Eric Sanders, Bernice Marek, Bob Spurk, Joshua Christ, Laureen Stork, Norma Garcia, Julian Mahalovich, Kathy Rains, and the people of Maui. Lord, we also pray for William Lane, Mary Esther Rios, Erwin Rath, Brandy Orsack, Payden, Payden Pruitt, Richard Chapman, Morgan Heck, Dylan McGord, Jeffrey Morganroth, Charlie Garman, Carrie Besetsny, Dwayne Dixon, Evelyn Lashinsky, James Evans, and Pastor John Schmidt and family. Lord, we also pray for Safe House Church, San Miguel and Houston Aroma Lutheran Churches, President Biden, our country and those facing unrest and unemployment. Keep them safe in the midst of suffering and sorrow. Increase their strength and faith. Let them see the light of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Gracious Father, your love endures forever. We commend our beloved dead into your care and pray for the families of Patricia Valentine, Peggy Ashley, Gladys Duvall, Sylvester Garza, Jerome Peshek, Ann Robotham, and Fred Kavanitz. And your mercy draw near and make good your purpose for us. Keep us steadfast in faith, 
bold in witness, generous in sharing, cheerful in helping, gentle in exhorting, frequent in forgiving, and constant in thankfulness to you, our rock and our salvation. Lead us into, pres lead us into presence of Christ, our Lord. <laughs> Give to us and to all whom he has redeemed eternal joy and gladness, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Hear our prayer, O Father, and grant all that glorifies you and builds up your people. This we ask for Jesus' sake. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Now it's time quickly, as we do each week, to uh, remind you about our offering. Of course, we point you over to that website. That's where you can find all the stuff about giving your gifts to the church, right? Including uh, the address if you need to mail yours. Of course, you brought it with you. It goes in the box. And then up there, you can take advantage of our, one of our three simple, safe, uh, secure ways of electronic giving. Now, God's the giver of all good things, right? We know that. And he sustains us with the gifts of his creation. And then he uses these gifts here and the offerings to multiply his graciousness within us. He does it especially through the congregation's mission and ministry so that the world can be fed with his love through our everyday lives as the body of Christ, right? A body of Christ broken and given to the world. Let's stand and sing our offering song. Let the vineyards be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and dreams of all, unite them with the prayers we offer. Grace our table with your presence, and give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made us good and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and sound, you who tarry. That we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through whom Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power Lord and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name. 
You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Having come into the world, he fulfilled for us your holy will and accomplished our salvation. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and his promise to come again, we give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. And we implore you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit, to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, that we and all who share in the body and blood of your Son may be filled with heavenly peace and joy, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, and be sanctified in soul and body, and have our portion with all your saints. All honor and glory are yours, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done. done on On earth earth as it is is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day day our daily bread, and and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against against us. And And lead us not into temptation, (laughs) but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. To do each week, we remind those who are listening and watching to concentrate and reflect and meditate. Here are the blessings our Lord bestows upon us in his body and blood given and shed for you. The ushers will guide you forward to the railing where we will administer communion. Uh, you may stand or kneel there at the railing. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.
For the true body and blood of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which you have now received, strengthen you, keep you in his grace, and preserve you unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. of those whom we have fed with one heavenly food. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming to worship this morning. Of course, before we get out of here, remind you all that stuff up there on the website, right? All that stuff's up there. Not for my benefit, but for your benefit, right? So that you can uh, see God at work in the ordinary circumstances of everyday life. You can help somebody else see God at work in the ordinary circumstances of their everyday life. And on your uh, Bible studies this week, which are also up there on the website, let's pick those middle questions, three and four, will give you an opportunity to reflect on those gifts that Paul names, uh, not only in, first, in uh, Romans 12, but a few other places, just to see where God is at work in, the, again, the ordinariness of your own everyday life. Uh, calling you to accomplish that which is a good and um, perfect, as he said, and acceptable, as we heard this morning. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.